I swear, I think the reason the little dudes hit on me is because they can see that I'm at ease in my own skin, which is so rare. Physical beauty is super rare. I used to play this little game like, how many IQ points would I give up to look like Charlize Theron? I would be a moron with a propeller hat <laughs> if, uh, <laughs> if I could have that face. I used to think that when I was younger, I did. But, but the reality is, is that you can be beautiful and still be a hot mess. In fact, a lot of times, I, I live in Hollywood. I, I have the most beautiful little girls in my building and they come up the old elevator to talk to me. I live at the top of this old building and, and, I, and I sit in there in my peignoir sets. I've become evidently the Yoda of vagina. <laughs> And these little girls will text me, you know, can I come up for tea? And I give them advice, you know, and they sit there and they ask me questions. And it's so interesting to me, Leslie, how the world has changed and changed and changed, and yet it's the same. It's the same. You know, boys and girls want to meet each other and like each other and fall in love. And, you know, and it's difficult. There's a lot of changes in the world. There's a lot of sexual fluidity. I'm, I'm expected to be invited to a wedding any day now where the invitation says he, she was the man, woman of his, her dreams. You know, <laughs> bring your own marijuana brownies. Like, okay, I'll, you know, I'll, 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 come to your, I'll come to your wedding. I don't judge, but the reality is people are people, you know. People want to meet and fall in love. And I said it earlier, if you're a little girl and you're on Tinder, get off. That's not a, that's not a dating site. There's no happily ever afters. That's just a delivery system. That's all that is. That's just the man letting you know where to bring the puss. That's all it is. And uh, I know that sounds grim, but some of you in the back, I can see your faces. You're like, really? Uh, yeah. yeah. I remember meeting men the old fashioned way at work while I was married. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, I had paperwork, Lacey. I was separated. I was getting divorced and everything, but, you know, but it was different. You had social skills. You would meet somebody in a bar, and they would send you a drink, and, and they would give you the eye, and you would give them the eye. I don't even drink, you know, but, but still, you would take it, and they'd come talk to you. You had social skills. You weren't, like, texting, and you weren't just looking at pictures of their head, you know, you, their head, you know. Like, what if you meet a dude and his head looks normal and you show up and he's in princess pants? He's in, like, little jeggings. You know, what do you, what do you say? Like, I just saw your head. This is not working for me at all. This is, this is not good. It's, it's, and it doesn't account for energy. Everything is energy. That's why even a synonym for the word money, legal tender, is currency. Currency, energy. There's some things that are more cash than cash. There's some things that are more money than money. When you meet somebody and it's like right on, you just know like, oh, this is gonna go good. And you know, you know you lie to yourself sometimes, but you know when you meet that someone when your emojis match on a crowded page. <laughs> you, know. <laughs> you know, but you just know. Like I don't even know how long you guys have been together. I don't know if you're married. I don't know anything. All I know is that by your body language, you dig each other. Like you really like each other. That's, that makes me, it gives me hope. It gives me hope, Silver Fox. I look at a man like you in man pants with your silvery hair looking like a former astronaut, you know what I mean? Like, no, he does, he looks fancy. Like he's got like plaid pubic hair, you know what I mean? Like, you're, you probably live close by. You look very Hermosa. Like when you, when you have sex, you don't yell out, I'm coming, like I have arrived. You know what I mean? Like, I like that. I, I like that. You guys have a real relationship. That's what I want going forward. I mean, me and the little dude, we had a good run. We had a good run. Eventually, my mom, she got hip to it. You know, my mom, my 70-something-year-old Hispanic Catholic mother who watches too much reality television one day decided to let me know she was cool with it after all this time. She's like, Mija, I understand. I understand. I get it now. You guys are like friends with privileges. She thought she was being cool. Fr to hear that coming out of her mouth like freaked me out after three failed marriages trying to make her happy. And she finally says, I get it. I understand. Do what you want. You know, there's no chance of me having an accidental pregnancy at this point. So she says, I don't care. Do the math. I, uh, so she says, you know, I understand. And, I, and, I, and in my heart, I felt bad because I thought you haven't caught up with me yet. I wish that I had a friend with privileges, but that's the difference between men and women. If they're not age appropriate, th everything was a history lesson. We didn't have a communion. We didn't have an interaction. We didn't even, he wasn't my friend with privileges. It was more like the hang and bang. You know, <laughs> we, uh, 
You know, it was like Netflix, a breakfast burrito, and some wiener. You know, I mean, it was, that was it. I mean, I mean, I'm not proud to say that. I'm really not proud to say sometimes I didn't want the wiener. I just wanted the movie and the breakfast burrito. I was like, <laughs> we just hang out and go to a diner, you know. But I, I look forward. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I look forward. That's the exciting part. Yes, there are some setbacks to being older, but, but I, I'm very excited about the future. I understand this world. I understand this world because I'm... I'm probably like the world's oldest millennial. You know, I've always been, no, I, I, I'm serious. I've always been a little different than other people. Like I've always been green. I used to rinse out Ziploc bags like back in the 80s. I would rinse, I'm serious. I've, I've saved tin foil and like straighten it out. I do. I got that from my grandma. And I tell people, Latino people aren't green on purpose. We're green because of our lack of green. So we learned to. <laughs> We learned to recycle and make use of things. And I, I never ate, like, movie theater food. That was, like, now who would eat Jordan almonds? Nobody would eat that stuff full of corn syrup anyway. But back in the day, I didn't eat it because my grandma would make us stuff to take to the movies to sneak in. And, uh, and we didn't just sneak it in. You know, it wasn't like we were sneaking in, like, popcorn of our own or potato chips. No, we were sneaking in, like, arroz con pollo. You know what I mean? Like, we were... <laughs> Sneaking in savory food in margarine containers, because <laughs> Latino people don't buy Tupperware. That's for rich people. We, uh, <laughs> the trick at my grandma's house was finding out which tub actually had the fuck margarine, because we had. <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, it's it, it's it's a different world in many ways, but in many ways it's it's the same. It really is the same. People people want to be in love, and people want to trust each other, and. People want to have a relationship, and these little girls, they sit and they talk to me, and I say, you want a man to love you forever and ever? And they go, yes, Yoda. <laughs> I say, don't talk to him. And they look at me, and I go, that's what your girlfriends and gay men are for. I, uh, men and women communicate differently. Women are drunk drivers on the information highway. We don't have to have a destination. We weave all over the place. We don't make sense. Men are task-oriented. When a man speaks to a woman, he wants to know something happened. There was a beginning, a middle, an end. My work here is done. She has information. The mission will be completed, you know? It's, it's a very interesting thing. You know, when a man wants to talk to you, you'll know. I love this guy. You're looking at me like, write a book. I like <laughs> When a man wants to talk to you, you'll know, because he'll stand kind of close, like he's getting ready to engage. He'll look a little constipated. You know, be like. <laughs> and then he'll give you information. I tell girls, when a man calls you on the phone, he doesn't really want to talk to you. It's because men have a thing in their head, a list, and it's a short list because they can't remember anything. They have a list, <laughs> things I got to do to get laid. And one of them is the check-in call. They really love when they call you and you don't answer because then they get the point, but they don't actually have to talk to you. Or you're like hysterical from this. Eddie's like delight. Eddie's like, oh my God, she's a mind reader. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great laugh, ma'am. Thank you for that. <laughs> no, it's, but it's true. I tell women, I say men are hunters and that hasn't changed. If you want a man to be a man, understand that he is a hunter. Make him chase you. You want a man to adore you? Hide from his ass. Don't turn your phone into an electronic tracking device. When a man calls you on the phone, take advantage of that situation. Make him wonder what you're up to. Be vague, be brief, hang up quickly. I'm serious, act like the FBI has tapped your line and you're dealing blow. He's like, how are you? I'll tell you when I see you. Don't worry about it, I gotta go. He'll come home with a steel blue bone or a cat can't scratch. Where's Anna? Where's she hiding from me? Men are hunters. Hide from him. Make him wonder what you're up to. The girls don't know that. Don't be obvious. You know, be a girl. Have a little mystery. You know, I, I tell girls, even, even you know, in, in the sexual arena, don't, like, unfurl all of your secrets the first time you go in the sack with them. Act stupid like you never saw one before. <laughs> And I'm going to tell the guys, I'm going to tell the guys, women are not visually stimulated. If you're a young man, do not send people dick pics. Nobody wants to see that.
I am a totally straight female. I am super straight. I am straighter than Yoko Ono's pubic hair. But I, uh, because when you're a stand-up comedian, you're a little forceful. People wonder, you know, like, do you swing out of both trees and get caught in a bush now and then? Or No! I am not sexually fluid. No. Hard and concrete. I like the boys, you know? And I, and I tell them that because I, I've been hit on by chicks, you know? They're like, oh, you, how do you know you've never, my friend S Scott witnessed it, you know? How do you know you've never tried? I know, I like men. You know, like, like, well, I can do anything a man can do. No, you can't. You know, like, oh yeah, I got toys, I got Star Wars remote, I got drone dildos, whatever. A man is a man. Like the, the, the belly, the chest hair, the smell, the bunnies. You know, you know what I mean when I say the bunnies, the <laughs> werewolves, the conejitos, you know what I mean? Like, you can't simulate the smack of the bunnies. <laughs> what are you gonna do, put a bunch of wet cotton balls in a tube sock? You're killing me, Pam, you're killing me, no. I went too far with that, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Leslie. You're like, smack of the bunnies, what is the matter with you? What I'm, what I'm saying is, is that I, I like men. I'm not judging anybody, but I am a little old school. I understand that sexuality is on a continuum, you know, and we're lucky the most vast majority of us know what end we're on. You're like, you're gay or you're straight, you know? I don't believe anybody's 50-50 right down the middle. I don't, I really don't. When people say, I'm bi, I'm like, you're just greedy and lazy. Pick a team and play hard. Cause, Cause you're hurting people, you know what I mean? When you just kinda keep going over the dividing line, you hurt people on both sides is all I'm saying. But, but it, <laughs> Lacey's looking around like, stop talking to me. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. No, but, but, but the thing is, is that you, you, know, you know what you like and you know what you want. I'm, I'm looking forward, I'm excited. You know, I, I, I know what I want now and I'm comfortable in my own skin and I feel like I'm gonna meet somebody and he's gonna appreciate that I am self-confident and happy. You know, I'm not all nervous. Like, you're a pretty little girl, and there's a pretty good chance if, you know, when you and Chris were first together, you know, I don't mean to make assumptions, but I think you've known each other uh, in a <laughs> carnal way. Uh, <laughs> knowing how the world works now. And, and you know, a, but, but I talk to these little girls when they come up my elevator, you know, and we talk about sex and I'm shocked at how repressed, how open they are in some ways and then they're like, oh, I, I, don't, I don't like that, that's a weird position, don't put that on, don't sniff me there. I go, you want a man to love you, be self-confident. You just, you just stand in the living room, you know, buck ass naked and just go like, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> do me any way you want and when you're done, squeegee me and bring me a jelly donut, how about that? <laughs> Or what? Or a taco. Oh, a taco? Okay, that's your preference. All right. I see. Taco night's gonna take on a whole new meaning for Eddie. I like. Uh, th this is a great audience. It's like I'm starting to feel like those old garage days again, and nobody has their phone out, so we're safe. Let's talk. <laughs> But no, it's, it's funny because when you're, when you're talking about, you know, the differences, women aren't visually stimulated. So I'm going to tell you right now in case my future ex-boyfriend is in the room. Uh, <laughs> no, I've only gotten one dick pic and it was on Christmas, which was really gross. <laughs> I think he was trying to let me know like, oh, this is what's going to fill your stocking. I'm like, whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa. I mean, I speak, I speak millennial, I do. I sent the appropriate emojis like Santa Claus hat, lips. You know, I sent the, I sent like all the good XX and then I get boom, wiener, like what? <laughs> I, I, tell, I tell young guys, because they ask me advice too, I go, you know, this is the relationship that you want a woman to have with your penis is um, the same one that Sigourney Weaver had with the alien in 1979, <laughs> which is you wouldn't, you have to think of romance as a movie, you know, and you wouldn't open the movie with the monster. You don't do that. You want the woman to simultaneously hunt and fear the monster, you know what I mean? You want her, you want her to be looking for it. And the first time she sees your monster, you want her to be in awe. You're like, oh, oh, like that. You know what I mean? Like you don't want it a little tiny on her phone. You want to be, you want to be standing on a leather hassock with one candle with like a shadow puppet. You know what I mean? Like jump down. It's huge, but I can control it. Don't worry.
You guys are really wonderful. I, uh, it's come to a close here. It's, uh, it's come to, yeah, I know. I'm, but I, I'll be back. But I, I'm going to finish. Yes, abs- I promise. You've been amazing. I'm going to close with my three best pieces of advice. I close every show this way because it's important. Yes, ma'am? Go ahead. You, you can say it. Love hard, forgive harder, and get as happy as you can as fast as you can. Wow. I am so moved that you knew that. Wow. Lo- wow. Love hard, forgive harder, and get as happy as you can as fast as you can. Thank you. Good night. God bless you. Show some love.